Hey YouTube, just wanted to update you guys. Uh, so uh, I recently sold my 2015 FJ09 and traded it out for a 2014 Super Tenere ES. Um, this has literally been my dream bike. You know, before I got the FJ09, um, I actually wanted to buy this bike or R1200GS. And the only reason really why I went with the FJ09 is because I'm a I'm I'm five foot four, so like. You know, getting to this ADV style type of riding, like I was just very unsure of myself. I came from a CBR, a 2009 CBR 600RR, so I was kind of used to sports bikes. You know, everyone knows sports bikes are really light. They're very small bikes, easy to manage, easy to flick around. Um, but uh, so the FGO9 was like my entry into uh, the big adventure touring bikes. And, you know, I made a trip out to Las Vegas on that bike and it was okay. It was, it, was, it got kind of cramped just because the, the way the, the rear sets were set, your feet kind of sit further back. Um, but you know, I, I, uh, I like the bike. It was a good entryway. Um, had a lot of upgrades on it. I had like an uh, adjustable hydraulic adjustable preload or suspension I put on it. I have even put cruise control on that bike. So I, I had loaded it out. Um, but it just was never, I could never get it to, to that perfect comfort level in the ease of riding as, you know, an R1200 or a Super Tenere. And, and before I bought this bike, I went and sat on an R1200. I, I loved it. It was a 2016, um, Problem is with the trade in, I still would have had to shell out ten thousand dollars, and you know I just couldn't justify that. You know, um, plus, and I heard a lot of stories about the new boxer uh, engines on those um, 20, 2014 and up uh, water cooled engines. Is that they have this? They just sound really weird. Like a, 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 they, a lot of people describe it as like putting nails in a bucket and shaking it. The way the engine sounds, and some had a cam. I think it was a cam chain tensor issue that they had to recall. But you know, for, for the type of money you're spending on a bike like that, I just, I don't think it's worth it. Um, you know, Yamaha, every, any kind of, generally any jack bike is very reliable. My Honda CBR600 was so freaking reliable. Same with the FJ09. This bike, you know, it, it's 2014, I got it used, it's 5,000 miles on it. it. It sounds flawless, man. I love the way this bike sounds. It is awesome, it is smooth. It, I love the, it's gruntier than the uh, FJ09. You know, a lot of people say that the engine on this bike is boring, but I totally disagree. Could be that I'm done with the sport bike phase. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I just had my fill of that. And so for this, it's just like, I love it. I love how smooth it is. I love the mean sounding engine. Um, I just love the way this thing rides. And it's, it's just, it's, it's just, I'm so happy I got this instead of the R1200. And, and you know, me being five foot four, it's, it's very manageable. Uh, I haven't had an issue. I, I don't, obviously I can't flat put this. If my, if I sit on it, I can get two tippy toes down. Um, but most of the time, I just one foot this thing. And um, I have, so far, I've had no problems. I never had a problem with my FJ09. It's almost about the same seat height. This is just a little bit wider. Um, and my girlfriend rides with me all the time too, so she likes the, the space that this bike you know, has to offer. It's much more comfortable than the FJ09. The FJ09, I actually had um, on the rear sets for the passenger, I even extended it downwards. But this one is just like, she, you know, there's a, just a perfect amount of room for her to get her, her legs down. She's much more comfortable on this particular bike than she was on that one. Um, so like, I, I just, you know, the, the biggest reasons, obviously, you know, if you're familiar with the Super Tenere, you got cruise control, you got heated grips, um, you know, you got electronic suspension on this particular model. Uh, but one, I guess one of the main things that I wanted, it was a bigger Seder, um, basically a bigger alternator. Cause you know, for my heated gear, I like to take trips in the winter. And so this time now she can have heated gear along with me because the Seder on this one can accommodate that. Um, another cool thing, so I, there's a few things, let's go over a few things to add. So I bought the bike like like last week and so I put the RAM out from the FG09. I put the um, the tire pressure sensor monitor from that I had. I also have, um, let's see here, I'm gonna show you this. I also have, Installed, uh, I don't think it's necessary on a big ADV back like this, but I installed the Scorpio alarm so you can like lock it. Let me pull it down longer. This came from my FJ09 and unlock it. And it's not probably necessary. I, you know, I, I had this on a sports bike, my CBR. Those, those tend to get stolen really, you know, often just because people can literally pull up a truck and pick those kind of bikes up. But I guess it didn't hurt to put it on here. I threw it on here really quick along with the, uh, the back off license plate thing. I'll show you how that works if you're. Not familiar with it, but that's e these are all just easy wiring things to add onto a bike. Um, so like the back off license plate, it kind of wires into your brake light, and 
in your turn signal, so it kind of acts as a, another brake light. signals integrated with it. So it's just more of like, hey, you know, do you see me? You know, I'm here, watch out, kind of thing. Um, one thing I do like about this bike is that it, uh, versus the FTO9 is that it has um, projector headlights, projector style headlights. Basically, like, these kind of headlights have a little solenoid in them where it flips up a switch to allow for high beam and low beam. So it's like, dual, a lot of motorcycles, one headlight's on and the other one's off, and then when you get high beam, the other headlight turns on. But this one's like a car, so, you know, it's like, it's like, I'll take an example of my 2017 Camaro here. This is called a projector headlight. Um, and so the advantages of this, of that, so this particular style is that, I used to build these actually for Tahoe's when I, I would retrofit cars. And um, what I'm going to do with this particular one is I'm going to have a kit coming and I'm going to change this out to an LED bulb. And so it's supposed to produce like, I think, 9,800 lumens. So right now this is just stock halogen. Halogen is so outdated. I don't, I'm surprised the Yamaha even threw this on there just because it's outdated technology. Um, so I'm going to change this to uh, LED lights. Um, you know, before my CBR, I actually did a retrofit and I had a HID, high intensity discharge. But high intensity discharge is kind of like on that cusp between halogen and LEDs because those kind of went out of style. Not when I saw, but the technology on those kind of kind of faded. Yes, the, they produced a lot more light than halogens, but the problem with HIDs is that they got really, really hot. Um, but you know, with the, with the advent of LEDs, you don't have that issue anymore. You got low power consumption, you got high in output, and you got long life. So I mean, it just killed. It took the market out of HID headlights. Um, so you see a lot of newer cars. Uh, this particular car has HID headlights, even though it's a 17. But you know, a lot of the new Cadillacs, uh, GM, like Chevrolet is moving towards uh, having LED lights just because it's more efficient. So I want to change those lights to LED lights um, very soon. I'll probably make an update on that. Uh, I got the Altrider lower crash bars coming in. Um, you know, it was a big debate for me. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy the, t the upper crash bars because for my FJ09, I bought uh, upper crash bars. But the funny thing is, the, the time I dropped it, the upper crash bars didn't really protect it. I mean, it, it was the lower crash bars that actually um, kept the bike up. So even though it fell on the side, right, the bike was still kept up by the lower crash bars. So I was like, I don't know if I want to shell out $400 and put the upper crash bars on there. We'll see how Altrider, how, how they designed it. But I think, I think in this case, I think the lower crash bars might suffice um, for this particular bike. And, and we, you know, we'll see. Another disadvantage I saw about, uh, if you're thinking about purchasing this bike, is that for the upper crash bars, it covers um, this panel on the right side of the bike, and you are gonna definitely access this panel a lot. Um, this is where the battery's held. You got your auxiliary connections in the back of here. Um, if you wanted to any, add any kind of wiring, you know, any kind of farkle, like the how I did for the power pressure monitor sensor, or even a GPS, you need to access this point. And the problem with the upper crash bar, I noticed, is that it covers this, and I kind of don't like that. I kind of like the ease and the ability to pull this out and access it when I have to. Um, that's just my personal opinion. So I have that coming in. Um, it should be here tomorrow. Uh, I also have the, uh, what is it called? The GV Outback Trekker side pannier is coming in. It's gonna be a, uh, on the, if you look at this, the right side will be a 48 liter and the left side will be a 36. But actually when you look at it, it's gonna be symmetrical because uh, you have to take into account this exhaust pipe. So the, the side here has to be smaller. Um, so, you know, I can't wait for that. And this I'm, gonna get rid of it um, my plan, my plan may sound stupid but but basically my little puppy here Eloise um, uh, I want her to come on a trip with me and there's this uh, new you know there's this new company that came out and they called the the pet the pet the pet pack uh, and basically they sell something called the pillion pooch and it is like literally like a tent like a cage tent that, that attaches to the back of your bike it's made in the UK so I have to buy a UK um, a UK, uh, what do you call it, uh, rear, rear rack. And so I'm, I'm actually in contact with these guys and, and how I want to get this outfitted. But basically, yeah, I want to have her with me. Um, it can hold up to 40 kilograms, which is about like a 70 pound dog, but she's only uh, actually 40 pounds. So it's like overkill for that. But, but yeah, so I have that coming. Um, I have my, my side painters coming. I did order an upgraded uh, windscreen. I had the V stream on my FG09. Freaking awesome windscreen. Uh, this is actually good for me 
because I have the MRX Cree uh, extender wind deflector, but the problem is uh, my girlfriend in the back, or my fiance in the back, it's not tall enough for her, so she gets a lot of wind drag up there, so I can't wait to you know have this extended out and then have this on top, so I'm just probably not gonna feel anything, no, no wind at all. Um, I did see that a lot of people are adding the side, uh, the Yamaha OEM side wind deflectors. Um, I think I might do that. Uh, it, it's, it's not too expensive, so um, I will take a look at that and try to get a, a pair of those. But other than that, um, I think I think you know I'm gonna keep everything else the same. Uh, I might add the the front lens guards just because I don't these these lights are so pretty, man. I can't imagine a rock coming or to hit it and break shatter this glass. I just I love the way it looks. So um, you know I'll try to keep y'all updated. It's an awesome bike. It's funny because this bike is the same color as my FG09, so like, you know, it's just kind of like a, an upgrade of the bigger brother of it. And a lot of people say like, oh, you know, the FG09 is more maneuverable, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, honestly, if it was up to me, I would say skip the FG09, go right to the Tenere. Um, it, it, but that, that's, that's, that's my opinion because I'm, I'm an adventure touring type of guy. I'm not really into the sports bike kind of scene anymore. And the FG09 is kind of a good hybrid of it. Um, but you know, I, man, like this thing, I, I think it's perfect for everything for city driving, for commuting, for adventure touring. I mean, you got a huge ass gas tank. I remember from my FJ09, I had to carry a, road, a one gallon rotor pack on the back, but I don't think I really, I'm going to do that with this. Cause I got a, a range of 360 miles for one tank. So that's, that is awesome. Like I, I don't think I need to carry extra gas unless you know, maybe if I'm going to Alaska but for the most part, the roads is plenty of gas stations. 360 miles is, is awesome. Anyway, uh, sorry for talking too much. I just freaking love this motorcycle, and I'll try to I'll try to get more shots, and I'm gonna try to plan a, a trip up, you know, a trip soon, and um, I'll just tell you how my experiences are, and and, and keep y'all updated.